Okay, uh, good morning everyone. And uh, this uh, is the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability Session. Um, our uh, um, opportunity once a year to have a face-to-face -face, um, at the IGF. And uh, we do have a number of remote participants as well. So um, is it possible to uh, read out the names of those remote participants, please? Oh, there you are. I was late for another okay. session. No, no, no. Uh, Judith will do it now. Oh, okay. It's remote. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. Judith Hellestein is here, ready to, um, um, to uh, uh, tell us about the remote participants. While she's um, uh, setting up, um, maybe we could go around the room and uh, if, um, if everyone can just uh, introduce themselves with their name and their affiliation. Thank you. So if you would like to start there, please. Uh, my name is Nano Katchi. I'm with the Federal Re Regulator of Telecommunications and Broadcasting in Canada. Thank you. Uh, Monsieur Dembele, um, um, votre nom uh, et affiliation? Um, Merci. <laughs> Pardon my terrible French. I know we don't. I'm in the the Mali. Et puis, secondo également, je, je travaille surtout, je travaille avec euh, le, la commission, euh, la question 7, c'est l'accessibilité des personnes handicapées au TIC, au niveau de, de l'UIT. Euh, ça, c'est, et puis, j ai, j ai, j ai, je suis également les activités au niveau du DCAD. Merci. Good morning, everyone. My name is Judy Okait from Nairobi, Kenya, founder Association for Accessibility and Equality. And I'm Gona Lastbrink, Vice President of the um, Internet Society Accessibility Special Interest Group. We have uh, several remote participants here. Um, we have Glenn McKnight. We have Deirdre Williams. Um, we have Jade shortly, uh, and uh, oh, um, and some remote participants who are actually here, but are in probably another session. Um, all right, and then we have um, um, Sandra Smith and another one, but I. Can't pronounce the name because it's a short one. Mina Rutu, so. But welcome all, and if you have any questions, please uh, notate it on the chat, and we'll make sure you, we get them answered. Oh, and I am uh, Judith Hellestein. I am also with the uh, in DCAD, and also with the ISAC Accessibility SIG as the secretary. And I'll pass it over to our esteemed colleague on uh, my right. So uh, this is Mohammad Shabir Awan from Pakistan, and I am the president of, uh, again, Internet Society Accessibility Special Interest Group. And I'm Shadi Abu Zara with the W3C Web Accessibility Initiative. Hello, my name is Holger Dieterich, and I'm with the German association called Sozialhelden, uh, which is uh, focused around the topic of inclusion uh, on, yeah, in the general space. Oh, hi, uh, my name is Peter Crosby. Uh, I don't have any of those kinds of affiliations. I'm a member of a number of, uh, uh, I'm autistic, so I'm a member of a number of uh, autistic uh, activist groups and lobbying groups. Good morning, I'm, I'm Peter Major from the UN Commission on Science and Technology for Development. Thank you very much. 
Uh, we have people in the back row. If you would like to introduce yourselves, please. At the, there's a microphone or at the table, please. Hello, I'm Sara Sauvelet. I'm from ADC, from Argentina. Um, hi, my name is Tess. I'm a researcher uh, based in Nairobi, in Kenya, and I do research um, that caters around understanding um, how to better equip uh, marginalized communities to um, get the beneficial things from technology, basically. Yeah. Thank you. Um, would you like to sit at the table to join us? <laughs> okay, that's fine, thank you. Um, okay, we have a packed agenda. Um, could we just see the agenda on the screen, please? Thank you. So, um, we have done introductions. We're going to talk next about the accessibility of the online and on-site IGF facilities. Uh, then we'll talk about liaison with accessibility-related IGF sessions, the future of DCAD and future uh, DCAD activities, and there could be any other business, so please consider that um, if, um, if there are any pressing issues. Um, we have um, a couple of people just come into the room. Um, would you like to introduce yourselves, please? Yes. Hi everyone, um, my name is Maria Vlahakis. Um, I work for a global women's rights organisation called Womankind Worldwide, and we're based in the UK. Thank you. Um, my name is Liz Probert. I work for um, an internet service provider in the UK called GreenNet. We host lots of charities and I do web development, so I'm quite interested in accessibility. Thank you very much. Um, we're hoping that this session will be quite interactive and that's why it's really good to know who's, uh, who's here. So, really good. Um, okay, so the, um, the um, next item on the agenda relates to um, the uh, accessibility of this um, IGF, um, the physical facilities and the um, uh, online facilities. Uh, so um, I'll open the floor to um, any uh, comments, um, any issues that people with uh, might have had um, moving around uh, the venue. Thanks. Shadi, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, this is Shadi Bazar again for the record. Um, just, yeah, to, 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 to break the ice and open the discussion, um, I want to say I think physically the venue is one of the best ones that we've had in the IGF so far. I really want to thank the, the host, um, the organizers, um, uh, for, I think, excellent work. There is um, already, at uh, when you arrive, an accessibility, um, um, accessibility counter uh, at the reception um, asking whether any support that you need, um, the hosts are providing uh, support, including um, staff support, actually, um, assistance uh, to help, but also physically, um, so far I've been able to move around very smoothly. Uh, I think um, so. Uh, for the most part, I think this was uh, this is a great venue, uh, physically. However, <laughs> I think the online, the website, was really, really difficult to use, um, and I think there are basically two issues. One, and I think we have that very often in many years, is that there's the main IGF website, and then there's the host website, and the interlink between them is sometimes very difficult. Where do you find something? Where's the information you kept? You have to really dig several links until you finally find what you need to find. Um, and then the schedule, I, I, had, I had a really difficulty um, understanding the schedule and being able to find the uh, sessions. 
um, that need to be getting an overview. Um, um, I know there were different views on how you can switch between them, uh, but I found it very difficult to use. And um, uh, yeah, um, these were the main issues from my perspective. Shadi is Judith. Hello, Steen, for the record. So the question I also have is on the, after the schedule was finalized and it is now in the, the web version or the mobile app version, did you have quite problems with that or was that much better and maybe we could work with them, you know, figuring out when you say schedule, what, me, what you mean? I do not I, I don't have the mobile version. I do not know it. I tend not to use the mobile uh, so much for these kind of things because I have um, already difficulty on a, on a large screen getting a proper overview. It seems very often to me even harder with just generally with apps uh, on a smaller screen uh, to actually get around and navigate and things like this. So I do prefer. Um, it works for me better also the pressing the buttons and the and the keyboard and so on uh, on a on a full scale on, on, on the laptop rather than fiddling with a uh, with the smartphone um, yeah thanks so much um, maybe we could get Shabir do you have any questions on the scheduling um, with the accessibility of it too Uh, I don't have the questions on the schedule yet. I have a recommendation. Uh, it would be good. So I have used mostly the website. It's also available on the shed as well. So it would be good if we could see. So there is a session's name, and in front of that, if you wanna, if you want to uh, see that where it is, session would be placed. So you have to go to another page, and sometimes you have to check. So if if the the names of the of the rooms would have been placed right in front of the the sessions, and at the page where all the sessions were listed, it would have been uh, much easier to to scroll down the down the program and just see that where you want to go, instead of just uh, fiddling with the pages. Uh, one more thing that that I. Uh, I would like to appreciate is the is the assistance that the German authorities and and our local host have uh, provided. It's the it's the best one. Although it's my second physical IGF attending, so it's way beyond uh, what was uh, or what was experienced earlier. Uh, and for that, I have to thank the assistance provided by the by the local host uh, Patricia and Zara, who have been uh, there helping me uh, to roam around in the sessions and to move around quickly amongst the session from one to the other. Uh, thirdly, there is uh, uh, also appreciable thing that the the hosts provide the uh, food in the food court. Uh, an interesting point, if there were some options to know about what is available because one has to, so, so uh, one option is to go about to the food court and check all the counters, what is available, to ask someone to read that. So if there was an option to know about that, what would be available in the food court, uh, some, some menu or something like that, that would have been really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. They're all very useful comments. Um, are there any other uh, comments, um, positive or, or uh, constructive, uh, that uh, can be done in future? That anyone? Um, yes. Oh, Thank you, Peter. I don't know how constructive this is or positive. Um, I've been carrying this around for two days. It's a printout of the screen. It's a screenshot of the scheduling page. Um, everyone here will have seen it in one way or another. This is not accessible. This does not follow WCA guidelines. It doesn't even begin to. And I'm, I'm a bit in the sort of Greta Thunberg situation here. I do not understand why we are putting sites like this uh, online. 
I don't understand who is looking at this and not recognising immediately that it is, it is not going to be accessible for a lot of people and does not meet guidelines. I mean, Shadi said yesterday in, in one of the um, discussions, uh, grades of colour. There are four, gra four grades of blue there. There, we have the, the, the Twitter and the Facebook icons come twice, but they do exactly the same thing, yet we're supposed to be reducing clutter and so on. I mean, you could spend an hour on that page. It's like a, a classic of what not to do. And it, it was a bit like that last year. And in some respects, I found it a bit easier to navigate this year, but just not really. So I, I'm just confused about what's going on here, why, why the guidelines aren't being followed, and who's actually checking or not checking that they are followed. Yes, I think they are all very good points. And uh, um, as an incoming member of a MAG, um, I will bring these uh, points to the Secretariat and uh, also, uh, we should be able to plan um, for the next IGF to, um, to improve the website, the interfaces, um, and the apps and so forth. Um, any other comments? Yes? Um, I'm just curious, it is the IGF. Was there any thought to um, installing a beacon system for navigation? Uh, I know there are a number of sort of options for that type of thing, just to sort of allow people to be a little more independent. I was, I'm just curious on that. Uh, this is Judith Helsin. I could answer that because we've asked the same questions at ICANN meetings, and in ICANN they have more money in spending on those things. Those things are extremely expensive, and the IGF does not have the budget. Um, they don't even have the budget for... We had problems with interpretation because they have rooms that have interpretation, but they never thought to get the audio streams from the interpretation to the people who are doing the captioning. So, so many, that's, uh, an, in, in a sense, that's a little bit accessible thing because it also means that we can't, I, and communicate as well and with Mr. Dembele and others who don't, who, who are attending and can't really participate as well. Um, because the, they, although we could hear in the room, no one else could hear them because they were not passing through the art, the uh, English language audio stream to the, to the um, captioners. And it was just something they never thought of. And I went to them, I talked to them afterwards and they said, yeah, we didn't think we, and so they, it's very simple to create these audio streams. Um, they have them on a closed loop, but it's very simple to get it passed to the speak to the captioners. But they just, none of, none of this was thought through. Um, it's just because they don't have the experience. It's not that they're against it. It's just they're not aware of these issues. Um, probably with the website and uh, they weren't aware. When we originally, when the sheets, when the, when the draft schedule came out, and it was in multicolored, and it was very difficult to follow, um, we complained, the DCAD complained to the IGF and the IGF um, created a static page for us that was less colors and that could be read by others. So it seems like once we bring awareness, they are willing to do something, but they are totally not aware, and they should be aware, and hopefully now that Gunella's on the mag, we will get accessibility brought to the higher stage so that all accidents, they, she can say when they're planning, we need this, this, and this. And then it can be taken care of because many of these are simple things that can be done, but they're not done because they're just not aware. Thank you, Judith. And uh, I think it just comes back to the fact that uh, we, we need to continue um, telling uh, the organisers uh, about these issues because um, these accessibility issues, if, if they are addressed, it's going to be better for everyone, really. Uh, so, so that really is the underlying message. Uh, 
Judy, did you have something to say? Okay, thank you. Um, just to add on, like what Shadi has said, um, so far this is one of the best uh, venues um, uh, the IGF has had, despite the fact that uh, if you're in a higher level room, then you need to actually come two, down, two steps down to go to the bathroom, that the bathroom is not really available on, on, on all the floors, um, the accessible uh, bathrooms, I mean. Um, the support from um, the staff has been excellent. I think yesterday I was spoiled for choice. Yes, um, yeah, that was really nice. Um, and then just um, what we've continually been saying about the cabling, yeah? It, it causes a real bump, and I, I, I saw this yesterday, and I've seen that Peter was just about to fall off because he wasn't able to um, before he saw that um, there's more like a bump, yeah? So this really needs to be taken care of. I think we've discussed it before. Yeah, and we need to bring it back to the front. Thank you. Uh, this is Judith again. We have some comments from remote users. Um, several of them did comment on the problems with Sketch, that it was very difficult to manipulate. Um, and also the coloring, some people said that it's very difficult. There wasn't, it, it wasn't, it, it was hard to figure out how to navigate by days um, without having to look at the full schedule um, and how to just work it. And the coloring um, was very difficult for people to follow along who have some accessibility challenges. Okay, thank you. Um, we have we have a good list there um, to um, uh, to inform the um, the IGF secretariat, and uh, I'll be working within the MAG in future to uh, to hopefully uh, fix many of these issues um, in in future. Um, okay, so let's let's move on to the next agenda item, uh, which is um, a liaison with accessibility related IGF sessions. And um, yesterday, we actually had three accessibility sessions, uh, more or less one after the other. Um, the first one uh, was the DCAD workshop, uh, Accessible ICT in Education and Employment. And uh, we had um, a very useful discussion uh, covering uh, many aspects uh, and with a focus on the Global South. Um, um, I'll, I'll just go through each one and then maybe um, people in the room or, or remotely can make any comments uh, about those sessions. Um, the, the second session um, was, um, and pardon if I don't get quite the title correct, um, um, uh, Internet uh, Empowering People with Disabilities, which was um, facilitated by um, the um, app association uh, based in the US. And uh, we had a, a very v healthy debate about um, how um, app developers um, can um, ensure that their apps are made accessible and the rationale for doing that. It's not just a cost factor, it's a very much a benefit factor as well. Um, and moving on then to the uh, French Digital Council uh, that had a, um, a session about partic participatory design uh, for web accessibility. And, um, and we had um, Mohamed Shabir Awan um, as one of the panelists. Uh, and um, it, it went into um, a lot of useful detail about the participation of persons with disability um, in web design and also a lot of aspects about web design itself. Um, so they are the sessions that have been and there will be a session um, later this afternoon um, in, as a main session um, at 4.30 um, and that is dynamic coalitions um, uh, working to meeting the um, sustainable development goals. And um, I will represent DCAD on that um, 
panel session uh, at 4.30, so people are very welcome to, to come to that mm -hmm. and make comments and, um, and uh, any participation would be very welcome. Uh, so um, I uh, now pass it on to the floor to make any comments uh, about those uh, particular accessibility uh, sessions, uh, mainly yesterday. Thanks. All right, so everyone, everyone um, was clear on that. Oh, Shadi, excellent. I was hoping others will speak up. Uh, <laughs> um, I thought it was excellent that we had um, um, organizations and individuals from outside the DCAD proposing sessions this year on accessibility and welcoming new people, um, having more diverse perspectives uh, coming in. Um, so, you know, each of the session I think was was very different. I'm very happy that we managed to have a DCAT session as well, thanks to you, Gunella, for all the background work you did on that, um, to be able to get it, um, that DCAT session uh, as well. So I think that was important, but I think it's, it's um, um, it, it was a good mix. I think we had good, different discussions uh, coming from different perspectives. Um, and um, uh, yeah, maybe delving in a little bit into, you know, next agendas. I, I, I hope we have more of that in the future, that we have more, um, you know, interactions. Um, one of the things is that we, uh, we had no slides uh, <laughs> in all of these sessions, uh, but more interaction, more discussion, and I think that's something that is um, good to continue. It's Judith Helsing for the record. Um, so one of the other things I thought was good is that all we could work on last, next time is um, working on titles and the, a lot of the issues with people with titles is that they are often translated from a different language. And so um, while they may have been appropriate in that language, when translated, they um, got to be a little bit offensive to some people. Um, and there, again, it wasn't an issue of they just, when people were not aware that the terminology they were using was not appropriate. And I think what we could do is, in next time is try to work with people on terminology. And so that way, um, the sessions, because some people may not have gone to a session because they were so turned off by the title. And we don't want that. And so I think looking at the titles, and people are very happy to change the titles if they know, but they, they just don't know. And I think that is something that we could look into. Thanks. Yes, um, the uh, the terminology is uh, is important and uh, and certainly uh, an ongoing issue. Um, I I should point out that we um, one of those accessibility sessions was featured in the in the daily digital watch, uh, and and that was that uh, f that final. A session on participatory design, and so then the the, the term disabled people uh, was used, uh, but also the term persons with disability, um, and uh, so so we're very pleased that one of those accessibility sessions were featured, and it it is unfortunate that that uh, that term disabled people was was um, included in that article, but um, we'll we'll continue uh, raising that as well. Um, okay, I think we'll move on to the, um, the next agenda item, um, which is the future of DCAD. And, and this is um, um, a good time to mention that um, um, Andrea Sachs, the uh, coordinator of uh, DCAD, is unfortunately not here. Uh, she has um, heavy commitments with ITU. Um, and, uh, and she was the one who actually was instrumental in um, ensuring we, we had that uh, DCAD lunchtime session yesterday. 
Um, I also want to um, uh, give thanks to the previous ITU secretariat, um, uh, Karu Misunu, um, who was really excellent in supporting DCAD activities over a number of years. And, um, and now um, Jose Maria is, uh, is helping out um, over the short term for this 2019 uh, DCAD, um, who is also, of course, in ITU. Um, and there's been that ongoing support from ITU over many years. Um, also want to um, give special thanks to the IGF Support Association um, that has been very supportive of DCAD, again over a number of years, um, in providing a real-time text transcription of the MAG meetings and other meetings um, online, as well as this time through um, additional donation from Google, um, allowing um, uh, travel support uh, for three people to be able to come uh, to participate in IGF this year. So thank you very much to IGFSA for that. Um, now, the, the particular agenda item here, Future of DCAD, um, might surprise some people, but um, we, we need to have a, a good discussion in regard to um, how DCAD will operate in future, uh, in regard to the, the possibility that support from ITU um, may not be available as it has been in the past. So um, we, we have been talking um, about this um, with Andrea and um, a small group of us to try and, and, um, and find ways to move forwards. And, um, and so some of these um, uh, are, I think it's important to provide the, the background um, to DCAD for those people who are not aware. Um, DCAD, the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability, was one of the first IGF dynamic coalitions, and it had a role of advising IGF on the accessibility of online and on-site IGF facilities, organising a workshop on accessibility um, at the IGF, and also holding um, a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting, um, as we're doing now. Up to this year, um, DCAD was supported by a secretariat, and I just mentioned um, that in regard to Kara Misunu, um, providing reporting and organisational functions. Um, there was ITU funding for four online DCAD meetings per year uh, with real-time text transcription and a website as well as a discussion list. So DCAD was founded by Andrea Sachs, who's a very well-known disability advocate and has done a pioneering work in accessibility at the ITU. Um, Andrea has been unable to participate fully as DCAD coordinator in the past couple of years based on um, a number of other ITU accessibility commitments. Uh, so there hasn't been any sec secretariat support um, during this year and there haven't been any online meetings. Um, so I, I want to pay tribute to Jerry Ellis, who is a DCAD member. He took on the task of organising a DCAD workshop, chairing the DCAD session and representing DCAD at a main session at the 2018 uh, IGF in Paris. And I've, I've done that now in uh, 2019. Um, we, we probably won't uh, be able to do that similar function um, in future without some um, further support. Now, Andrea is due to have discussions with ITU after the IGF, um, and, but we need to we need to decide if we should look at alternatives for our DCAD's future if that ITU support isn't approved in future. 
and also if Andrea's commitments prevent her from active coordination of DCAD. And she has indicated that uh, um, she probably isn't able to provide that um, commitment in future. So um, this is an opportunity to discuss options um, and, um, and I can, uh, well, um, I have a little bit more to say, but I think I'll just open it to the floor now and, and then we can, um, uh, we can consider what type of options, uh, but I'm just interested in your comments about what I've just uh, stated. Thank you. Yes, please. First Could of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Kamat. I'm coming from India. I'm myself uh, physically handicapped for more than 160%, but I stay here in Europe and Germany. And I'm also a journalist of the Europa Parliament as well as the Hamburg Parliament. But unfortunately, today I'm a pensioner, but I still work on the social working grounds for many subjects of the physically handicapped, as well as the other social problems. Two aspects I want to bring before, so that in the future, when we decide about the uh, physically handicapped persons, the missing on the digital lines are the representations from the different small countries and different, different underdeveloped countries I can only talk about the Indian, although Indian is a growing country, we have a, I mean, very sorry to say that we don't have for the dilapidated uh, recommendations, there is a committee, but this committee is exclusively for the government purpose and the government policy form, uh, forming purpose, but they don't help the reality of the people who are underdeveloped, do not have financially supports, but at the same time, they struggle to come out of that. And the second part I would like to bring to the uh, knowledge, that important issue in the Europe, that word racism and uh, discriminations to the non-Europeans, and this issue would be very digestible and very interesting if we bring forward to the reality means. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, DCAD um, is um, global. Uh, it should, should um, represent um, uh, people in the community internationally. And I know that we have people uh, from just about every region in the world. So um, it's an opportunity for people to have their say. So thank you very much. And uh, we will continue to um, work so that everyone, wherever they are, um, can participate in DCAD um, when it comes to uh, support for particular countries. Um, I don't think that's within DCAD's mandate, uh, apart from uh, raising issues um, in the global IGF. Um, but please, let's continue that discussion um, um, after the meeting, and we can, we can see where we can go with that, so thank you. Are there any other comments at this stage before I look at um, some of the proposed options? Shadi, thank you. Um, yeah, a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, uh, I absolutely echo what you're saying, Gunella, about uh, the access uh, of, of, of DCAD and the reach um, across different regions, which is really one of the reasons why me myself but 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 also you know w3c is really interested in this is uh, to, to reach communities and and, and uh, regions of the world that we typically do not have the access i think the dcad is really a unique opportunity for um, global networking that um, we, we we don't have uh, such venues on an international level as easily to to coordinate and 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 moving from that i want to really uh 
put out a huge thanks and recognition to all the work that Andrea Sachs, she's not in the room, some of you may not know, uh, but has done immense work uh, to pull this together and to uh, move it along for so many years. I remember the first IGF we had uh, in Athens where many of us were strolling around, uh, not, not knowing, um, you know, uncoordinated, and uh, sh she was the one who, you know, suggested that we have, um, um, uh, you know, one, one venue where we can come together, the individual people who are interested on accessibility and disability, and brought that together and made it happen. And um, ever since, she, and everybody who knows Andrea knows she's a <laughs> fearless leader, an amazing person, and has really driven this uh, to, to, to amazing potential. I think this is really great. Um, my personal observation is I think over the years, uh, maybe also a bit of a reflection of IGF generally, uh, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> uh, but definitely, I think in our uh, uh, dynamic coalition here, is that um, we started to silo and we started to be speaking more to ourselves and repeating many things, uh, you know, year for year. Um, uh, you know, Andrea has already worked on this uh, handbook uh, for, for the MAG and for the IGF uh, years ago on accessibility considerations, and, and, and we still find that we have to keep repeating it. Um, on a way, it's uh, un, you know, unfortunate, and we have to continue working on this, making the IGF itself accessible. Um, but on the other hand, I, I really think it's time to um, start thinking about how we can in the future um, speak less to ourselves um, and speak more to other communities. I think there are really many exciting other dynamic coalitions and accessibility is a horizontal aspect that addresses all of these. Um, was it two years ago, I think? Uh, I wasn't last year's IGF. I think that may have been the only IGF I missed. Uh, no, there might have been another one. Uh, but um, otherwise, um, the one before was at Geneva. And I remember there was um, um, uh, something that you had pulled together, Gunella, uh, together with the Dynamic Coalition on IoT, and here uh, discussing the intersection of accessibility and Internet of Things. Um, I can imagine many more things. Privacy is incredibly important to people with disabilities. All the sensitive information that is being, uh, you know, put out, um, you know, um, you name it, accessibility should be part of that discussion. Uh, children and child protection. Well, what about children with disabilities? Uh, you know, so, so there are all these uh, communities and all these things that we should be, I think, um, you know, go more into breadth than depth and, and, and really having more interactions with other uh, dynamic coalitions and try to make sure accessibility is across the bench, um, e even though I really enjoy talking with all of you, <laughs> but we should also be talking to others. Judy, would you like to comment on that? Or? She's Judy, I'm Judy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gunella. Um, thank you, um, Ishadi, for, Ishadi, for opening the floor. Um, I think that comes out very clearly in one of the sessions yesterday when somebody said we need to create more awareness and advocacy to the able-bodied persons. And it was interesting that even after the, um, the workshop, I mean, somebody came up to me and was like, my goodness, these things, um, they're not that complicated the way we make them seem. You know, they're so simple. It's only that we are not aware. We, we do not know what it is that persons with disability want or what it is that they need. And, the, and when they come into these forums and they hear it and they're thinking, that is not rocket science. That is so simple. And yes, I do agree with that, and I'd also just like to add on, uh, probably it's also time to uh, begin working with the national, regional initiatives. Um, we keep talking about a bottom-up approach within the IGF. 
And unless we can be able to push down the accessibility right from the national forums, uh, what is it that they're doing about accessibility? Whether, uh, whatever it is that they are holding their, their forum, um, whether the, the place is accessible, um, whether they are engaging with, uh, with the persons with disability, because this is really a policy making platform that persons with disabilities should be uh, part of. And of course, what we've continually said, that um, nothing for us without us. So it is about time that um, we started seeing what is it that persons with disability can bring onto the table and start discussing it from the national uh, initiative into the regional. And so when we come um, to the global IGF, then it becomes a little bit easier because this is a discussion that has started from the grounds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Shabir, please. Uh, thank you, Shadi and uh, Judy, for highlighting very significant points. Uh, being a student of international relations, I see things uh, from a realist perspective. Of course, it's, it seems very good to talk about accessibility and enabling persons with disabilities. Uh, but as a student of international relations, I know that there is no free lunch. So you have to be a bit creative. You have to be a, a bit realistic. You have to understand your strengths, your weaknesses, and, uh, and the ways uh, out of uh, your weaknesses. Uh, keeping that in view, uh, I would like to propose here that there, there were a number of sessions, like more than 60 sessions at, at IGF. Uh, we have three, uh, we had three exclusive sessions on accessibility. Uh, other than that, there is uh, one session that we are currently sitting in, and there is uh, again a session where Ganella would be uh, speaking as part of uh, dynamic relation on accessibility and disability. But each and every part, even if you talk about sovereignty, uh, uh, Shadi talked about privacy, human rights, uh, disaster management areas. So, so uh, you see each and everything uh, we need person with disabilities to, to, to be taken care of. Someone highlighted here that uh, we need to uh, uh, bring in more people and country specific. Uh, uh, someone referred to a very populous country, India. Yes, we know. But it's a, we need to also understand that it's a volunteer community. So no one is being uh, like uh, being paid. So so someone will have to come out of their shells. Yes, we need to uh, work on the strategies that how to bring people on board on the table. But again, it it is a two way process. So if if I take initiative, if if uh, Judy takes initiative, if someone else takes initiative, so. Uh, there has to be a mutually understandable process that, that comes out of it. Uh, keeping this in mind, I think I would like to propose here that, and again, uh, NRI's uh, Judy Talks, it's a wonderful idea, but again, as long as you have people who are really active in there, for instance, uh, we have uh, Pakistan School on Internet Governance. Uh, it's like one of the one of the earliest school on internet governance in South Asian or rather Asian region. Uh, we have had five uh, editions so far and it's, it's an annual event. So each year we have a session or a, a slot or a session of about uh, complete one hour on accessibility. Uh, I've been to APC Asia Pacific School on Internet Governance, and I think once Ganella has been there, she done uh, a session on that. But somehow it got it, it gets dropped out of it when you uh, when you stop focusing on certain aspects. So it's not just about starting an initiative; it's it's also about the keeping the momentum when. It's, it's, uh, sometimes it may seem easier that once you have done something, oh, then you automatically figure that it will go automatically. No, it does not. You have to keep an eye out that where something is uh, relaxing or laxing and where is the gap that you need to fill in. So you have to be vigilant. Uh, 
Uh, we've had some very excellent points here, and uh, we we have really looked at um, how DCAD can operate in future, and that relates to um, working um, horizontally um, because. Accessibility is a cross-cutting issue, we know that. So whatever whatever the topic is at the IGF, um, be it privacy, security, data sovereignty, um, em emergency uh, management, um, people with disability are part of that. And if DCAD has a possibility to um, be part of those different sessions, um, have members of DCAD um, available to speak on panels um, on those t different topics. Uh, that will influence and, and raise awareness about accessibility for people with disability uh, in a lot of um, parts of the internet community. So it seems like um, a very uh, good way to go. And certainly uh, Judy's uh, comment about um, working on the local and the regional um, uh, IGF levels as well um, is very important. And I know in Africa, for example, um, there are uh, considerable um, accessibility initiatives that are raised um, at the IGFs there and in the Asia Pacific. Um, uh, certainly uh, the next one coming up in Nepal, um, there will be um, a lot of accessibility features um, when it comes to the venue and having sign language interpretation and so forth. So um, we, we need to know that, we need to share that information. And, and that, that can be a very useful function of DCAD as well. Um, and and it's this, it's this stra it, uh, building up a strategy of embedding internet accessibility in digital inclusion policy. And we can do that by, by being involved across the board. So um, it might be that um, members of DCAD say, right, we want to propose a workshop uh, for the coming um, 2020 IGF on artificial intelligence and accessibility. Um, some of the issues and, um, and also some of the, the, the great benefits. Uh, so um, that's only one topic. There can be a, a lot of different topics. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that there is a, a a DCAD workshop, but it can be members of DCAD proposing various topics. So um, that probably um, gives us some very good um, good ideas to work forward on, and, and certainly liaising with um, other dynamic coalitions. Uh, uh, the number of dynamic coalitions is growing. Um, we, we have lots of opportunities there to engage and we, um, we can take it from particular members who might be interested, uh, say in a gender issue or um, if it's um, Internet of Things um, or whatever else it might be. And, and, and that particular member can grab that and say, okay, we would like to liaise. Um, and uh, and we, might, we might have online meetings um, that um, link in with some of those other dynamic coalitions. So thank you very much for all of those um, comments and suggestions. Um, we we ne need now to go back to um, this discussion about uh, DCAD itself and how um, it might operate if there isn't that uh, uh, support uh, from ITU in future. And I totally echo what Shadi mentioned before about Andrea. I mean, she has been a powerhouse of advocacy uh, for many, many years um, at the IGF, at ITU, and many other fora. And 
and her strong advocacy and mentoring skills too have, have really helped um, to, uh, to ensure that accessibility um, is, um, is prevalent at these IGF uh, meetings. So some of the options to look at here is um, should we keep the status quo and await the outcomes of discussions between Andrea and ITU? And that means we continue the established pattern for DCAD, which, uh, which we know is having a DCAD workshop, having this session um, and, um, and commenting on the accessibility of a venue and online facilities. But if there is not going to be any ITU support in future, um, it's unclear who will, who will do this work, um, how it's going to be structured. So we, we need to be very cognizant of that. Um, there is a potential other uh, possibility, and that's to find other homes, so to speak, for DCAD. And, and there has been um, discussion of G3 ICT maybe um, providing um, a home uh, virtually for the website and the discussion list. Um, that, uh, that discussion needs to uh, continue if, if that is something that members of DCAD um, would be interested in. Uh, the other possible home is the Internet Society's Accessibility Special Interest Group and, uh, and we have, um, well, we have three members of the executive sitting around this table. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we feel that uh, we, we could possibly assist there. There could be other so-called homes for DCAD which, you know, I'm interested in hearing from people here about. And if we are going to look at a new home, we need to consider um, how we would then move from ITU, bearing in mind there is a website and a discussion list. Um, a new discussion list could be set up. There could be a transfer from uh, the existing ITU um, discussion list. And certainly the content of the existing website can be transferred. Um, importantly, we need a core committee uh, to be formed to work collaboratively and systematically on DCAD matters. So it doesn't just fall on, on one person. That's really, really important. And we need to recognise that there is considerable time and person resources necessary to do this into the future, to, uh, to make sure that DCAD uh, continues being heard to be successful in, in future. And there could be other suggestions that I'd be very interested to, to hear from people uh, in the room and remotely. So um, I'll open the floor, thank you. Um, Mohammed Shabir, thank you. Okay, uh, for now I take off the hat of uh, ISOC Accessibility Special Interest Group President and I now wear the hat uh, of uh, member DICAD. So I'm speaking as a member uh, DICAD here, Mohammed Shabir Awan for the record. Uh, we need to consider why, while we are looking for a new home. So uh, while uh, our association with ITU is, uh, is, is now uncertain and for the time being it has uh, stopped somehow. Uh, there were like three things that we were getting from ITU. One, there was this nice lady, Kiru, we have talked about her. She was very instrumental in organizing and doing the secretarial work for DICAD. Second, the, the lady and ITU uh, provided us a home for the website and for the list. And third, there was some financial support from ITU. Uh, for, the, for the third, we, uh, we, we have already lost. There, is, there was no, if I, my understanding is right, there was no financial support from ITU for this year. So that's that is already, that bridge is already burned. 
So we now we need to decide that we just we <clears throat> do we uh, so uh, and the secretariat is also uncertain for 2019 and 2020. What would be the future? Who knows? So it's uncertain. Uh, it's it's just about the uh, website and the, the the list. So the new secretariat, whosoever comes in. Uh, would have to work with with ITU if they want to manage, and they would need certain access uh, to the to the ITU system, which may for an outsider not be an easy thing to to get into, and there would be certain administrative issues as well. Therefore, it is it is really important that we look for any any other home. Uh, at this point, I take off the hat of uh, I DICAD member, and now I, I put on the hat of Accessibility SIG president. And now I say as uh, ISOC Accessibility SIG president that uh, for the time being, uh, Accessibility SIG cannot commit to, uh, to any financial resources. But uh, for uh, secretarial work to manage uh, the website and to manage the, the mailing list, uh, our, our administrator, uh, uh, Jolly uh, McFly, who, who works from the United States, he has agreed that he would be able to, to do that work. And even if the secretariat remains with ITU, uh, please keep in mind while you are commenting that even if we decide that it remains to be with ITU, uh, he would need to manage that list and to manage the website. He would need access to ITU system, which may not be coming uh, him being outsider and not the staff of ITU. Uh, I stop here and I'll, uh, it's open to, uh, for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed Shabir. That was um, a very useful, uh, practical explanation of some of the potential future issues we have um, uh, if that ITU support uh, isn't going to be available in future. Um, please, anyone else um, who would like to input into this? It's Judith Helsing for the record. Um, we only had an earlier intervention by Deirdre about the uh, issue of, as people age, there's a lot more um, people that have some disabilities. And so she wanted to bring that onto the record. Yeah. Yes, Peter. Oh, the, the only thing I'd say as someone who's sort of um, new to this, to be honest, um, there just seems to be quite a lot of overlap with different organisations kind of working in similar fields uh, and doing s similar kinds of things. And I just wonder whether or not it, it can't be somehow, um, uh, DICAD can't be part of a, another organisation or joint forces with other organisations such as, um, I forget what it's called. That you're, yeah, that you're president of. Yeah, for example, and uh, both to sort of leverage what's going on and and um, just so that there's more working together and more uh, kind of cross pollination and um, and so on. It just, I I don't know. I, I I'm. As once again, as someone who's new, I'm having trouble too. And even that a number of you are across different organisations, then I don't know why. Why, is, why not find? Even if we need to find new new ways of forming sort of uh, relationships, new ways of of working together, rather than perhaps uh, more structured organizations more perhaps looser but at the same time a more active affiliations if necessary uh, i mean I, I, i'm not sure thank you i think that's a very important comment uh, so we we don't have uh, two similar groups working parallel but very closely together and it's a matter then of 
how we go about that. Um, Shadi has the answer. <laughs> No, I was just <laughs> nodding in agreement. I, th I thought that was a really good point. I think that's a very important point. I think the relationship here with the ISOC SIG, uh, I think, is a, is a, is a really good one. Um, um, and I, yeah. Um, one of the questions I have is uh, there are lots of unknowns right now. Uh, and you know it's it's a situation that we're in, and it's just a question: how can we resolve these question marks? How can we actually take decisions and start moving forward? And um, uh, uh, you know what's 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 the process to resolve these uh, is, is is really what's in my head. Um, it is complex, and uh, it. Uh, I think um, a number of us have tried to uh, come. Mm, a number of us have had discussions to try and uh, work through this, uh, and uh, there aren't any easy answers. Um, so maybe we we need to keep keep thinking about how we're going to do this. Uh, it's just an opportunity while we all are in the room together and we have some remote participants that uh, we, we can uh, consider together uh, how we would do this uh, so that um, the voice of, of persons with disability continues to be heard, uh, certainly at the IGF, um, and also through the uh, the Internet Society's Accessibility SIG. Um, and, and if I put my Accessibility SIG hat on for, for a minute, um, it, uh, this SIG is, is new. It was only formed in April. Uh, we are growing our membership um, uh, quickly uh, with participation or membership uh, throughout the world, different regions, and uh, we aim to do a number of activities next year. Some, some are very much focused on Internet Society chapters and um, Internet Society staff. So it does have a little bit of a different focus to what uh, DCAD does, which is um, working with IGF uh, to ensure accessibility, um, as we've talked about earlier uh, with on-site and online facilities, um, but also um, liaising with the other dynamic coalitions and um, with um, national and regional uh, initiatives um, uh, of IGFs uh, throughout the world. So um, while there are uh, similarities and uh, a number of uh, people uh, belong to both groups. Um, the, um, the aims um, and activities are slightly different. Um, so it's really a matter of um, can there be a way that we are more effective or efficient in the way we organize uh, to, um, to achieve our ends through um, these different groupings. And, and G3ICT, of course, is, is another organisation that, um, that does excellent work uh, in the field. Um, I'd welcome any further comments at this stage. Thank you. So, um, just a follow-up question, this is Shadi. Um, the, so, it, it seems to me, what is the exact situation right now? Uh, so sorry to ask such a basic question, but my, uh, my understanding, uh, if I remember the emails correctly, I, I, I don't know. Um, um, so, ITU has kindly, and I'm uh, sorry, I'm not coherent. So first of all, yes, we are missing several people today, <laughs> uh, including Andrea, which is really 
uh, unfortunately, it would be gr great to have the discussion with her and several other people who have been very instrumental in the past, um, thinking of Jerry and others as well, um, you know, to have a broader discussion. So we probably will not able to take decisions right away today, uh, is, is, is my, um, my assumption. But uh, just to really try to at least have a proposed, a proposal that we can, uh, you know, go out of the room with um, is, you know, uh, ITU has provided support for several years now, uh, and my understanding is this is the last, or is there a discussion, or what's what's the exact situation? Uh, we don't know. Okay. Hmm. Um, it it's complex, and and um, it would have been very good if Andrea was here to help us. Um, I, I also recognise Malcolm Johnson of the ITU have, uh, um, has been supportive of DCAD um, for, um, for a considerable time and, um, and Andrea is expecting to have further discussions um, in December about this. Um, so there is a temporary um, secretariat, uh, basically until the end of the year, and that was only um, set up a couple of weeks ago uh, to assist with um, uh, with uh, ensuring that the website um, content in regard to these particular meetings um, at the IGF are on the website. Um, so it is. It's very unclear, um, and basically that's all I can say. We we really we really are unsure, and uh, that I suppose is why we we need to at least have some proposal um, that we can then um, go forwards with. Because if we don't, uh, it would mean that uh, DCAD uh, may continue because there are passionate people who want it to continue, but the, the type of support when it comes to um, the discussion list and the website um, may or may not be uh, supported by the ITU in future. So um, if, if certainly um, that, that finishes, we, we, need to, we need to have some type of plan how we can ensure that those people who are on the discussion list, that, that they can um, participate um, in any uh, activities that we do into the future. So I'm afraid I can't be much more specific than that. Uh, this is Judith Halstrom. We have a question also from uh, remote, from Glenn McKnight. He wants to know, besides, I guess what it, what what it wasn't clear, I think, is that um, besides the NRIs or uh, Internet SIGs, what are the groups? We had some talk about us putting inputs into different sessions, like the. Um, dynamic coalition of core values, the dynamic coalition of Internet of Things, um, the end of rise, and I think we skipped over that topic and we didn't really explain it as much for our remote, for the people who hadn't been involved, mm -hmm. um, what's going to be our take on that area. Um, and so that was basically his question is there other groups that are that we could be involved with, or is it just taking up too much of our time um, to get involved in those groups, or and just leaving DCAD to run up that? So that's basically. Okay, thank you very much, Glenn, for those um, comments. Um, <clears throat> 
it's, it's basically, um, I, I suppose it comes back to resourcing, that uh, we, DCAD has been operating in a set pattern for a number of years, and, and that is to advise VIGF uh, about uh, the accessibility of the online and on-site on um, IGF facilities, and also to ensure there is um, a DCAD workshop. And uh, what we have discussed today is, and, and, that, and this um, isn't totally um, uh, just new for today, because um, uh, Shadi, for example, proposed that um, uh, liaison with other dynamic coalitions a year ago and also mentioned it uh, um, on the DCAD discussion list uh, about a month ago. And uh, it, it means that um, DCAD has the possibility then of, uh, of bringing awareness about accessibility uh, more broadly because we, we did talk about um, are, we, are we too enclosed in our own silo? Do we need to uh, bring the accessibility message more broadly? And, and, and that can be an exciting way of moving forwards. And, and again, it's a strategy for embedding internet accessibility in r different digital inclusion policies. Um, so it, uh, it's a way of expanding really DCAD activities, but um, we, we don't have really any resources to do so. And, and that, that is the, um, the contradiction, really. Um, and uh, we are in a bit of a cloud at the moment. Um, and that's not the, the internet cloud, that's the general cloud. <laughs> so, um, we um, we only have um, about 13 minutes left, uh, so it's it's a matter of um, what we can uh, resolve at this meeting. If anything, um, we have aired the the issues. Uh, we have aired the, um, the the proposed future activities. Uh, can we go forwards? Um, um, with that um, and just park that uh, until we hear some something more um, uh, from Andrea and ITU um, because I, I think I think it's clear that Andrea uh, she has been so committed to DCAD for so many years and is is now are uh, interested in maybe committing to all her other ITU accessibility work. And, um, and uh, I certainly, for one, respect that. And, and uh, we need to find a way that will work for DCAD and for uh, accessibility within IGF so that the, uh, the message of accessibility is heard loudly and strongly. Okay. Uh, Judith is... Sorry? So, uh, this is Mohammed Shabir for the record. Uh, so, may I ask Judith if Jose Maria is uh, on the, on the uh, remote participation list? Uh, because uh, what Ju Ganela has just said, and what I understand from Andrea's last email, uh, which was sent uh, last night, uh, she uh, mentioned in her email, uh, and uh, let me just uh, read the relevant part here. Uh, however, I have copied Ganela as Frink, who did the D DCAD workshop, and Marcus Kummer, who handles the dynamic collation. Jose Maria Betanero, sorry for the pronunciation, who is replacing me for DCAD. So does this mean that Andrea wants to uh, step out? Uh, I'm, I would be, for, for one, very sorry to, to see Andrea leaving this dynamic collation because uh, her shoes are really, really big one to fill in. 
but we, as Ganela said, we also respect the decision. Uh, but the question then before us is that uh, we first need to find a coordinator here. Because uh, yes, we, we all want to work, but without coordinator, it would be difficult. Well, I, I guess we're not going to get much further if, if we don't know um, about the hosting situation. So maybe, maybe we should put a pin in that really and move on. Uh, because I think regardless if we have a hosting or not and who it hosts, I think we need to discuss how we want to work and maybe we can focus on that. And even if it's, you know, the one depends on the other for, for sure, definitely there, there's an interrelationship there at least have an idea, again, a proposal. I want to come out with something today. <laughs> That's really what I'm trying to, to do. And since one is maybe uh, too many unknowns around it, let, let's stop that there and let's move on and say, OK, assuming we had uh, a host or um, you know, some kind of a, a shell that will continue the work of this, uh, of this group, how do we want this group to work and to look like uh, in the future also regardless who, well, not regardless, but you know, the, right now leaving out, um, you know, individuals and, and, and roles out of that, but, but just in, in a more general sense, do we want to continue operating the way we were or do we want to make changes? What kind of changes do we want to do? Judio Kite, uh, for the record. Um, my thought is the best way forward would be to have a more of a working committee. That one will not hurt it whether it still stays within the ITU or it doesn't. But we have very particular people who can push it forward, who can have uh, discussions, because all along it's been surrounded, or rather it's been around one person. So even if um, Andrea is still there, but she will have a hand of people to work with. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Um, and I totally agree that uh, we, need, uh, we need a strong working committee. And maybe uh, one proposal coming out of this um, meeting is to um, maybe even identify particular people um, who, who would be prepared to be more active um, um, in regard to some of those activities we talked about. So um, if there could be uh, people and I, otherwise I'll point fingers at people um, who um, who might like to <laughs> volunteer um, because um, um, I, I was involved a few years ago with um, an organization where it was very clear that people were volunteered um, but um, can uh, can I uh, please ask for people who would like to be on this uh, core committee because if we do have a core committee of, of active people, that means that we can really achieve uh, a lot. We can achieve some of those um, activities that, um, that have been raised today. Uh, it, it makes it so much more difficult if it's left to one or even two people. So um, can I uh, please have the volunteers um, um, who wants, want to go on this committee now? Could you please uh, raise your hands or just say yes, thank you. Thank you, Gunella. You can count on me. Thank you so much, Judy. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, and how do I answer that? That's, <laughs> that's a very formal. <laughs> right. Um, 
<laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, so, uh, so far, um, we have uh, Judy Okaita, Judith Hallestein, um, uh, Shadi Abu Sara, and Mohammed Shabir Awan, who have very, um, very kindly offered to be on this core committee. And um, I have a suggestion for one further person who might be interested. Um, Peter, would you be interested to help us? Uh, I'd be interested to help you. I mean, I, but I don't quite know what it entails. So that would be my, my only hesitation about saying unequivocally yes. But yes, I, I'd be. You know, if this is sort of a bailout, or if it's not working, then uh, sure, sure. Thank you very much. And. Uh, uh, it, it's a very informal grouping. Um, there's, uh, so it's it's really it's really a matter of um, we we are pulled together to um, to do as much we as we can, and and uh, and when we have a clearer picture uh, later in December or early in the year, that will help us enormously to know how we are we going to work in future. All right, um, so Shadi, um, it's not maybe as much of a firm proposal as you might have wished, but at least we know we have people who are committed at this stage. Um, is there any other proposal that you would like to put to the group uh, uh, before we finish off today? Um, yes, Judy, you have a question. Yes, I have a question. Um, just for the record, I'd like to know, Gunella, are you part of that group? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're very perceptive, Judy. Uh, yes. yes, I'm very happy to be part of this group. Thank you. Yes, please. So as, <clears throat> sorry. so as somebody who's here for the first time and like a, here to learn basically, what's the best way to follow what's happening next? So I mean, I know there are usually mailing lists and websites and I found several and they were very confusing as we said in the beginning <laughs> as well. And so this may be the place to ask like where does actually discussion happen? I'm happy to subscribe to Slack or Twitter or email or whatever, um, I don't care, but just like, Informally, we, where's discussion happening? Thanks. Thank you. This is Judith Housing. Thank you so much for your question. We are very basic here, and we used as an email listserv. Um, and it's a DCAD one. Right now, it all depends on where we move, um, whether we are hosted outside the ITU, and in which case, well, we may use a different method but the current method we are using is the DCAD mailing list, and we can take your name and we can figure out how to add people, but that is not clear right now. Well, uh, I mean, I would, well, once again, I mean, I'm, I'm new here, so, but I, I just don't know that a mailing list is, is the best way of doing it. I'm on a in a couple of other groups uh, that use either WhatsApp groups or use Telegram groups. And I'd also just say, uh, as part of that, they're actually more accessible also. And for people like me, I mean, there are many, for example, uh, people with cognitive disabilities have real problem with email because the, the last messages come up the top and conceptually it's back to front, whereas things like WhatsApp messenger services are much easier to follow um, for example, and also I think that somehow uh, having some kind of social media presence, especially on Twitter, just for announcements or, or directing people, also that people can, the question, where do I find you, is, is a really uh, valid one, I think. Yes, those are, as Jews again, those are excellent questions. Um, maybe you are 
or the nice gentleman over here can be responsible for the social media. I think the issue was is that we didn't, in the past, we didn't have people who were savvy on social media, and that's why we didn't do it. Um, many people like email um, because they, um, if they don't have any bandwidth, they can easily get the email. Um, and you could also set up your email to get it differently. Um, there's been, in other groups that I'm involved with, there's been a real distaste for some of these other methods. Um, it involves one then getting another app on their phone, another this, another that. They have to track something else. Um, and so they prefer simple email. But, and we could definitely do a social media and a website preference. And we may, um, depending on where we move to, um, because we did have discussions um, with people outside the ITU who could possibly host our website for us and provide some kind of platform like that. Um, but we haven't made the choice of whether we're going to leave the, if we have, if we can get someone in the ITU to support us, then we can stay at the ITU. But if we can't get someone in the ITU to support us, then we may leave the ITU's website and move our archives to another place with a wiki and more careful things. But then that is also some other issues that we are discussing, but, but, but yes, if you give us your names, and we'll definitely put you on our DCAD list, and then also talk to you about brainstorming on social media. Yeah. Okay, I've been told that uh, we need to finish because um, there's another meeting starting very soon. Um, uh, I know Shadi might have had... Uh, no, it's fine. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I know we've had a bit of a roundabout discussion, but it's very important that we've aired all of these uh, questions and uh, we look forward to continuing um, meeting online, um, wherever that might be. Thank you.